Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who registered through the library calendar can pick up material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is salt painting. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. In our material supply kits in envelopes this month, we have um, the standard watercolor palette. You are getting a glue pen as well as some salt in a little cup. We also put in a bag so it doesn't spill everywhere. Um, one large yellow piece of paper that we're going to use when we add the salt to catch it so that we can put it back and use it again. And then for this project, we are using a canvas panel. Um, since this will be a little flatter and a little hopefully easier to work with. In addition to these supplies, um, you will want to have, because it's watercolor, you're going to want to have a little cup of water. Um, you may want a pencil if you would like to sketch out your design on the canvas panel first. Um, some paper towels just to clean off our brushes between colors. And um, this should be more than enough glue for you, but if you've got some extra glue, like tacky glue, something that's a little thicker and will kind of stay where you put it, uh, you may want that to complete your design. I am gonna go ahead and use a little bit more of an older uh, watercolor tray that we have here at the library for this, uh, and go ahead and get started. So since I'm doing the glue first, I can set my yellow paper and my salt aside, um, do kind of some sketching if I'd like. So maybe I want a flower here in the center. And I'm just going to spin my canvas as I go and think of whether I'm going to do several petal layers or just a single layer. I think for this particular part, I'm just gonna go with a single layer. And I'm actually gonna change that first petal slightly. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and give them a leaf. A nice little leaf there, something like that. The longer the lines the slightly easier i felt like it was going to be for me to add uh, the glue maybe i just want to do something that's a little bit more of a line so we can go with some zigzags there above and below my flower All right, so the glue is already um, open, so be careful when you pull off the lid there. You're going to be able to get that glue right to the tip. I was holding from the end of the uh, glue pen. These are pretty um, bendy, so once I got the glue down, I was able to kind of keep my glue moving towards the tip. I'm going to start at the center of the canvas so that my hand is hopefully not laying over any glue um, as I'm laying it down. So I'm going to just start right in the center with the middle of my flower. And actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and almost fill this in. We'll get to some petals here. Going right over my pencil marks so that they won't be seen on my final project. Coming around, and you see I'm also moving the canvas as I go, making it a little easier to lay down these glue lines. I'm getting a little squeeze there in, so I'm going to come back to my end and kind of roll it, almost like the toothpaste tube, to get all that glue right down to the front of the tube and coming out onto my canvas. petal Get these leaves on here and I'm doing a pretty solid line of glue not too thin 
not really too thick. In my example image, I did do some just kind of dots of glue, and those were kind of fun. All right, again, I'm just going to make sure my glue, I'm going to roll the end of my glue pen, getting that glue down closer to the nozzle. All right, there we go. There we are. Coming back around here. And I can do my zigzag pattern. I will say it is a little tough on extended lines with squeezing the glue pen. So if your hands give you trouble, definitely take short little breaks. You don't want to take too long before we get to the salt portion because we want this glue to still be tacky. So it really grabs a good portion of the salt. All right. Coming back down here. Go right to left on this one. You know, it's a little strange for my brain. All right, bring me down. This gives me a chance to kind of do these as a single line. Getting a good coverage there. Alright, just a couple more here. I'm just going to come all the way down on that last one. So I've still got some glue left. I could definitely add more designs. Um, with a glue pen like this, you could do uh, some script writing if you gave it a nice chance there and um, so i am actually going to go ahead and add salt to the design as i have it now like i said that's why we got this bright yellow paper here for you so we're going to be able to pour the salt right onto our canvas my little salt cup um the bag provided if you really wanted to you could pull the pour the salt in kind of snap a small piece of the corner off and use that to pour your salt um, but really, for coverage-wise, the little um, container here should be just fine. And I really am going to just go right over my glue lines, making sure I've got pretty good coverage there. And the salt in my cup is going to run out before I get to the end. So I'm just going to pour it right off into the paper which is handily folded and all my salt will go right here to the center and I can just pour it right back into the cup there we are bring my canvas back and get to these other portions that didn't get salt on them and I can do that however many times it takes to get all the way through if you do run out of salt maybe you've got a very involved design um, this is just Morton's table salt, so if you've got some at home, you can add to it as well. Just a little gentle tapping. Hold and pour. Come down over here. And my zigzags. Also, going back over portions that I've already put salt on so that in case there are any pieces of the glue that were missed, I make sure I'm getting salt coverage on those. You can see I've still got a pretty good amount of salt in my little cup here. Just kind of make sure all those corners. Get salted very well. The little points of my design. And I can see in the glue places where there might not be um, good salt coverage because the glue is going to be a little bit shinier um, before it has the salt on it. So I can see like right there in the very corner. 
and I may just go and put salt right onto it to make sure I get that coverage. Just kind of tilting it in the light. Gentle taps. That looks like pretty good coverage to me. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pull my salt back in one last time. And set aside my paper and my salt for now. Any leftover that salt that you have that you've used for this project, um, it is recommended to throw it away, to not hang on to it. It is not, uh, no longer something you would want to use on food since it has been on the canvas and on the glue. So whatever you've got left, definitely throw away. Got my canvas back here. Um, because most of my design is fairly close to the canvas itself, I'm not too worried about the work surface, especially with these watercolors. They should um, clean off anything fairly easily. Also, if you have participated in any of our senior watercolor hours or other crafts that have had watercolors that came on a card and you've got some of those left, you really um, would have some amazing colors that you could go ahead and work with on this project. Um, we can also use the top of our watercolor pan here to mix colors if we wanted to. So I'm just going to add some water to one of my colors here and get some color up using the red. All right. And as much as it seems um, maybe counterintuitive, you do want your brush to have a good amount of paint and water on it um, for when we go on to the salt. So I'm just going to tap a little, maybe even pick up a little more water. So that water is going to send that color right through the salt. Um, going over an area too many times is going to remove salt from your glue. So you want to be careful that you're not going over an area too much. Um, that way you maintain the salt. You can, if you prefer, wait and give your uh, salt painting a little bit of time for that salt and glue to really bond. Um, for this particular video tutorial, I am not. Um, but you can see I'm really getting some good color there on my flower. Coming back to my color, my watercolor paint every once in a while. That way I don't get too light of a coloring where I want it. All right, so I'm going to do that on the outside. And I think I'm going to do a purple on the inside. And I'm not really going to clean off between these brushes because I'm wanting a little bit more of a um, kind of meld and radiation to that color. So I'm just going to come right in. And if there's still a little bit of red, that actually will help with the design I've got planned here. So I've got my purple right around the center. All right, now this time I want to use some yellow, so I'm definitely going to make sure my brush is very cleaned off. And now let's get this yellow going. Right inside that flower there. I really loved the 3D look of this kind of project where the glue kind of pops it off of the canvas and the salt adds that really cool little um, granule look to, to it, to the project. All right, let's get some green for these leaves. All right, beautifully mixed up there. I'm gonna come right in this. And top and bottom and let that kind of flow up along water here. Um, also, if you've participated in some of our other programs and have some of the better brushes, you may want to give those a try with this project. 
um, since this is such a basic watercolor palette that we are providing, um, the brushes are really going to be pretty basic. So that may be something that will elevate your project just a little bit if you were to do that. All right, and I am leaving some spaces because I'm actually going to come back through and tap in a little yellow to some of those spots where the green didn't come through. Just a little tap there. Really liking that. Also, another um, step that you can take if you so choose is you've got the canvas itself. So I can come in gently in between my salt lines because I definitely don't want to get too much of the salt off. And I can just really add some color right in my petals, maybe my leaves, maybe into the background. If you choose kind of a natural scene, you may want to, you know, add some sky color to your background. Just coming right in there. Making sure I don't get too close. If you had a very fine point brush, that would be, this part would be a great use of that. Just kind of coming up in there. Beautiful. All right, maybe a little yellow. Let's kind of make that center pop. Put more yellow into my flower. Let's do the same with the leaf. I'm just going to bring in some beautiful, again, making sure I'm not getting too close to the flower there because I don't really want too much green on my flower. I just want to get some brighter colors in my leaf. Very nice. Oh yeah. Get some more green there. Wonderful. So really that is kind of this fun technique of using glue and salt to create a 3D painting um, on canvas here uh, that you can really, there is, the possibilities are endless for what you could do um, with a project like this. And we really do look forward to seeing any completed projects that you've done uh, with our supplies or with supplies of your own. We hope you enjoyed this Canvas projects, and we look forward to next month. Thanks for watching.